child, things are going to get easier. Ooh, we're going to get brighter. Yo, 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 yo. It's your homeboy, Kirosagi, in the built-in. Welcome to my first ever movie review. And in this episode, I'll be reviewing Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. This is going to be a spoiler-free review. This is my first movie review, so please bear with me. And, um... The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to do my review and then I'll do a discussion afterwards, but both will be spoiler free. So basically when I, when I finish my review, you don't really need to continue watching. Uh, you can just straight up, you know, decide for yourself whether you're interested in watching the movie. And the discussion is a little bit uh, more in-depth stuff. And uh, I'll explain why I'm splitting the two later on. But yeah, uh, so let's start. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy is a movie done by Marvel Studios. It's not done by Paramount or Warner Brothers or Fox or whatever. I mean, Warner Brothers, that's that's funny, but it's not it's not done by anybody but Marvel slash, you know, Disney because they're kind of the same thing now. But it's done just by Marvel Studios and they really just blew this out of... They did a phenomenal job. It's directed by um, James Gunn, who also did a bit of the screenplay and the script. I'm not sure if he did the whole thing, but I haven't checked the casting and all that, but he did, he did um, do some of it at least. And once again, James Gunn, I didn't know much about him before this movie, but I'm definitely going to check out his other movies in the past, which were between horror movies and, you know, like independent movies. Sometimes, you know, both, but he he's really like had a sort of humble background as a director. And, you know, this is his first time really doing a movie with such a phenomenal budget and also a movie directed or aimed at lots of people like um his previous movies are aimed at certain uh, audiences. And that's why his movies have sort of been love or hate movies like super is a sort of love or hate movie um the average review is like 50 out of 100 or like 49 percent of rotten tomatoes that kind of thing um he also did slither which is horror once again you know for a specific demographic but guardians of the galaxy is the first movie he's done that's um sort of appealed to a lot of people and he did a phenomenal job um uh, but yeah getting to the review this was a very very good movie in my opinion this is the best marvel movie i have ever seen and i've seen every marvel movie except amazing spider-man 2 and the reason why i didn't watch it because i saw the trailer i was like i already know what's gonna happen is it really worth watching but you know i'll have to watch it sooner or later but that's literally the only marvel movie i haven't watched since the year 2000 because obviously there's like older ones but i don't really care about those ones um yeah so that's my review uh, guardians of the galaxy is very very good um, oh, and it's also the most beautiful film I've seen as well. So not only is it the best comic book movie I've seen, but it's also the most beautiful film I've seen, the best looking film I've seen. I highly recommend you check this movie out in 3D. Um, if, if you don't like 3D, check it out in IMAX. If you can, check it out in both, but at least go for the 3D because you want to see this film in the maximum quality, in the best quality possible. Trust me. Um, yeah, that's my review. Very good movie. And now we're going to start the discussion, which is going to be a little bit more long-winded, but the basic thing... Um, my basic point is this movie is good check it out and when you do check it out you want to check it out in uh what do you call it maximum quality oh yeah uh so let's start the review i mean the discussion sorry for blundering so much this is my first time i really apologize but i'm speaking of my first time um i'll recommend um three reviewers that you guys might like that aren't me that are bigger and they're more professional and all that one is jeremy jads he does movie reviews in general Another is Chris Tuckman, aka Star Lord. He also does movie reviews in general. These two are very good and they review pretty much every close to every movie that comes out in the cinema. So you know you might want to check those guys out. Um another one, the third one is called Emergency Awesome. Now his he is really interesting because he doesn't review every single movie that comes out. He reviews um movies he's interested in, but generally Marvel movies, movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he does sort of in-depth analysis videos and theory videos um, that circulate around the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So definitely check out Emergency Awesome. I will leave links, I will leave links to all of the channels in the description below. Um, yeah, I watched, so yeah, let's start the discussion a bit. Um, I watched this movie on Friday. I couldn't do this video until today because um, I just came back from traveling. I, I traveled for an entire week and uh, yeah, it's, it's been very tiresome. I literally just got, just got home like a few minutes ago, but whatever. Um, Yeah, I'll go... The way we're going to do this discussion bit is I'm going to go over the cast and I'll be using poster pictures only because this is spoiler free. Um, And I'll give a little bit of extra commentary as well. But yeah, so let's start with um Star-Lord, um, who was played by Chris Pratt. For me, he stole the show. I really liked this character. Um, 
I didn't know jack shit about him prior to um what do you call it watching this movie except for that except for the funky helmet that he wears um but yeah that's pretty much all i knew and obviously that he used guns but i really didn't know much about him or how his character was but i'll tell you right now i am officially a star lord fanboy thanks to chris pratt and um what the marvel studios have done with the character is just a phenomenal job um for me he he was he's, he's the person that stole the show um but you know stealing the show is a very strong term because i think everybody actually did a, a pretty decent job um so the next person i'm going to talk about is gamora who was played by joe saldana i mean zil saldana sorry and she you can't go wrong with zil saldana she's a good actress who's beautiful and she's a good actress that's beautiful i mean you, you really can't go wrong with that especially when um you're using an actress who actually cares about the stuff she does and um, this isn't her first time playing a sort of space chick or anything and she just brings the character to life pretty well nothing crazy though i mean it's not like some heath ledger type of shit I'll, you know I'll, I'll just make that color there is no heath ledger in this movie including the villain don't expect a heath ledger type of villain don't expect a heath ledger performance as an actor they all acted well but none of them are like you know super duper mind blowing and all that kind of stuff even though i did really like chris pratt you know uh it's, it's hard to say because it's not that type of movie but i'm just making that clear none of them are really gonna i don't know blow you away maybe chris pratt maybe him uh maybe rocket raccoon maybe just maybe but uh if i could point out any actor that um would be the sort of MB mvp of this movie i'll give it to chris pratt he did a an excellent job but yeah speaking of record Cohen, he's the next person i'm going to talk about bradley cooper did a pretty good job of him i was really skeptical because like uh his bradley cooper um but he actually pulled it off pretty well and um for those of you who don't know all the facial expressions done by both rocket raccoon and groot are the space the facial expressions of bradley cooper and vin diesel they use the sort of motion capture thing to capture their faces so you know that is kind of his performance not just um, his voice acting because to be honest voice acting isn't that hard you just it's trial and error and besides you have the animators who do most of the work but not this time because you have the motion capture thing so you know this leans a bit more on the actors acting rather than just you know them speaking to a microphone until they get it right you know next we're gonna um talk about Groot um Groot is a very simple character very lovable character um you really can't hate Groot and um you really can't hate Vin Diesel either perfect combination and you know Vin Diesel has done the Iron Giant which is very reminiscent of Groot I mean they don't have that much in common apart from I mean they have something in common but at the same time they have a lot that makes them you know stand out from each other but I love both characters the Iron Giant and Groot and I'm a Vin Diesel fanboy too and he just brought Groot I don't repeat that <laughs> i'm gonna I'm, that's the last time i'm gonna say that but you know um he did a good job as Groot. i mean even though he didn't say much i mean he did say a lot but <laughs> pretty much he just repeated the same stuff over and over but nonetheless he did a good job um for somebody who was doing that next we have drax who is played by dave Bautista. um I'm, I'm butchering his surname a lot but that's because i'm thinking of his wrestling name but um he did a decent job like um, he's not the best wrestling actor you know i would give that to the rock but the problem is the rock can't really pull off a drax because when you see the rock you automatically think oh it's the rock and all this um, personality and charisma starts coming out of the character regardless of the um you know what dwayne johnson's expression is or what he's doing and that's the problem we have with ben affleck as batman you know but that's for a different discussion but you know it's a similar scenario um, and I think as a second best choice, I think um, Batista did a really good job. Um, he could have done uh, better, but he could have done a lot worse too. That's why I'm saying, you know, I think he did a really good job. And um, another thing to consider is um, the other actors he's acting with are phenomenal actors. Each and every single one of them, you know, Vin Diesel, Bradley Cooper, Zoe Saldana, Chris Pratt. These guys aren't, are, you know, these guys are nothing to play with. They are big actors. Um, they are good actors too. So, you know, in contrast to them, he's going to see him not as good but at the same time he didn't seem um bad and i think you know he deserves a few a few golf claps for that um uh what do you call it i have a sort of video limit of like 15 minutes or something so i'll try and wrap things up uh the villains we have nebula and ronin nebula uh there really isn't anything special about her except you want to pay attention to her that's all i'll say pay attention to her because something important in um, happens to her uh in this movie that's all i'll say um it's not a spoiler but more of a warning so that you pay attention and you don't miss it now we move on to ronin um like i said there isn't really any heath ledger in this movie and ronin is no heath ledger but i think people hate on him too much he was not a bad villain i think he was a good villain um 
he was just you know just a villain and i don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that because um he did stay pretty true to to the comics and i think he actually played ronan really well i think i don't think you could really do much better um the main problem is for i can't really go into this without spoiling but um there was something that made ronan's kind, kind of underwhelming just one thing you know um in the movie that when you see it you're like uh and all of a sudden ronan is no longer you know um the sort of almighty villain that he's supposed to be but in terms of an acting perspective i think um what's his dude's name again i can't remember his name is name is something like james pace or, or something like that but whatever his name is um the, the actor for ronan he did a really good job um the final thing i'm going to talk about is a semi-spoiler so you know you are warned and um this has been in the posters or at least in some of the posters so i'm not sure if it's a uh, if it really counts as a spoiler but the nova force or not not the nova force then the nova corpse are introduced in this movie and you know this could hint at some bigger things in the marvel universe the final thing is the collector now like i said i didn't know much about the guardians of the galaxy or the collector um, when i was going into this movie and had i known i'd have paid a bit more um, attention to him but um pay attention to him whenever you see him because you might see some um good easter eggs in the background now bear in mind this will take some time before like this movie's on blu-ray or dvd or whatever so um keep your eye out when you see the collector but yeah, that's pretty much it for my review thanks for sticking out around for so long uh very good movie highly recommend you watch it i'll do my um spoiler review later on not really today i'm kind of tired now but um i will do it with um like a, a bit more into detail on my theories and shit and uh yeah once again thank you guys for watching